All right, welcome to our third video of lecture 19 about the utilization of ground source heat pumps. Um, so, the first ground source heat pump was built in 1940. However, there were some high profile failures of really any just heat pumps in general, not just ground source in the 1980s. Uh, which just kind of decreased the reputation of these devices, which is too bad because as we talked about, the APA has, div um, has designated ground source heat pumps as really the best way, the cleanest way to heat and cool a building. Okay, however, since 1980, uh, they've kind of been making a comeback. Uh, by 2015, there were 1,400,000 GSHP units installed and at least last measured in 2009 so a little bit dated there were 50,000 units per year um, installed and that was going up so the growth rate of about 10% growth rate in the installation of GSHPs that's I don't know what that is now, honestly. Uh, we need to rehash this data now. That's uh, definitely an important study to do. Also, just related to finances, in general, you can expect a three to 10 year payback time. Right, so GSHP is more expensive than a standard air source heat pump because you have to physically move the earth and put pipes in the earth. So that costs a lot more, but you do save more energy because you have a higher COP on average. And so the amount of time it takes to make up for the increased cost based on the um, decreased amount you're spending on energy is about three to 10 years. Some are much faster, uh, some a lot slower. Okay, um, as a last but kind of most important, shall we say rule of thumb of utilization, is a ground source heat pump right for you? Like we said, it's not really renewable energy, right? It's just um, a less energy intensive way of heating and cooling buildings. Um, so you should really consider it's very cost effective to do a ground source heat pump when this is probably the most important. Your heating load is approximately equal to your cooling load. The reason for that is um, you know, we talked about if you have, oh, sorry, if you have a building and if it is, you know, rejecting heat to the ground, so that would be in cooling mode, right? It's taking heat from the building and putting it into the ground. Let's say your house is in Florida where you require a lot, a lot of cooling and then almost no heating. What this means is that over time, the only thing you're doing is adding heat to the ground. And so the temperature of your ground will go up in the summertime. Now, in a more temperate climate, say Ohio, then in the winter time, all of these arrows would be switched and you would then cool the ground, right? As you reject heat from the ground into your building. And that causes the temperature of the ground to now go down. Uh, but if the amount of heat you pull out of the ground is much less than the amount you need to cool, then the temperature of the ground will actually continuously increase and can increase rapidly if you're only getting cooling, if you're only cooling and never heating. So by allowing these two loads to be about the same, you reduce the amount of temperature change in the earth, which, cha which um, helps to decrease the number of boreholes or trenches you have to drill. Right, because really we have to plan to make a ground heat exchanger that can handle the total load after 20 years of heating the ground. That's a much larger ground heat exchanger. You probably need at least one or two extra boreholes than if the ground had stayed the same temperature. Okay, also these are great if you have a large variation in air temperature. So the true utility of ground source heat pump was that we're connected to the ground, which is at more or less a constant temperature. Although, like we said, it might change very slowly over time. Whereas the air outside where an air source heat pump is operating, 
could change drastically. If it's changing drastically, you're going to see a wide array of COPs, and it's hard to size your heat pump correctly um, and optimally. So if you see a large variation in these outside temperatures, it's good to use the very constant ground temperature. Or, but if your air temperature is essentially the same with time, if there is really no change with time, then you might as well use the air instead of the ground and save some money. Another reason you might do this is if there are high alternative fuel costs. So if you live way out in the middle of nowhere and you have to use propane to heat your home, and that costs a lot to have delivered and to even just purchase, then a ground source heat pump might make a lot of sense. Um, or any time that your fuel cost is very expensive, say for electric heating or natural gas heating, then it makes sense to switch to a more efficient system like a ground source heat pump. Finally, this is less about cost effective and more just about why you would install it. I mean, if you're looking for something sustainable or kind of the new word is resilient, uh, then a ground source heat pump is for you. It requires the least amount of energy per unit of heat or cooling delivered. Um, and even better, since it's electrical, you could put some solar panels on this house and power your heat pump using energy derived from renewable resources. So you could have an entirely renewable heating and cooling system. Okay, well, those are our two slides real quick about the utilization of ground source heat pumps.